Welcome to Line by Line, where we go behind the scenes of visual and performing arts and see how they work. And today we have with us uh, Ashley Hope, and she is the studio art professor, or one of the studio art professors at Houston Community College, and also the Hello. current <laughs> <laughs> and also the current artist in residence uh, at the West Houston Institute. And then in addition to that, we also have Israel Garza, and he is the manager of this place. It's uh, called the Idea Studio Makerspace at West Houston Institute. We'll explain what that is, or you will explain what that I'm is later <laughs> on. And it's, a, it's an award-winning uh, building in um, that type of thing. So we're going, going to talk about all of that. Welcome, guys, to the show. Thank you. Hey. Glad to be here. Um, there's been a lot of talk about STEM, S-T-E-M, standing for science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Uh, but now, or not just now, it, it has evolved, evolved into something more called STEAM. And we added the A in there for art. And um, I think that what we do at the West Houston Institute uh, really... Uh, shows what STEAM is all about, moving forward and, and adding art to all of this. So uh, I'm, we're going to talk to these two individuals who represent STEAM. I say that because uh, we have one from the art world, uh, creatives, that kind of thing, and we have another one from the technology business side. So you have both sides of your brain working together. <laughs> Right. He's also a, industrial fabrication side. So, there you go. You know, okay. he, he has the, the, <laughs> everything so. outside of what I do. Israel. <laughs> so you have two parts that make a whole. So first, let's start start with Ashley, if you don't mind, and tell us a little bit about your background. Where'd you come from? Why'd you come to HCC? And I know that you have both theater and I art do have background. A, yeah, <laughs> um, I was born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and I moved to the states when I was fifteen. I always thought that I was going to be an artist. Actually, weirdly enough, I don't know how I knew this, but I told my parents I was going to move to Paris to be an artist. Whoa. That seems very like well, informed and cultured, place, right? but we were not particularly <laughs> informed and cultured, so I don't know why I knew that. <laughs> but I did. So my mom passed away when I was 13. So when you know your family's kind of scattered like that, at 17, I was free to go to New York. There was no and I went to New York and pursued theater. So I had switched from art to theater. And I did a lots of musical theater. I did classical theater. I just stayed alive in New York City. I traveled and um, was having a good life and was a, went to Hunter College, which is a really well-known uh, art school for my MFA, was showing. And then my husband got a job at UH in philosophy. And it was 2008 when like the bottom fell out of everything. And so if you got a good job in a good city, you went there <laughs> to do philosophy, like you took it. And so he took it. I was here. I really had to reinvent myself. I was not enjoying myself. And actually, my kid had a speech impediment. I had to fund those lessons. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, fine, I'll just get an adjuncting job at ugh. I guess Houston Community <laughs> College. <laughs> Not Got it. You were Walked into, into my first um, <laughs> class at the North Forest, which I think is now gone, um, the North Forest campus. And it changed my in complete outlook on Houston. It gave me a reason to be here. It gave me the students that I now engage with that I recognized were actually Houston, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so that adjuncting job, which finally led to my full time job here, changed my life because it gave me a reason to be in my city you know and you went back to art and yeah i went back to art uh probably at about 23 when i realized i was not going to be barbara streisand <laughs> which was a bit of a shock <laughs> but that's fine i did go back to art um primarily because i always knew i was going to be a creative but i want i like the intellectual aspect of art and i like the right. fact that the thing was i was not my commodity i had a moral issue with right that, that, very so. good and uh, also, by the way, uh, you are also the uh, NYSAD Award. Uh, you received that award for excellence in teaching and, and that kind of thing. I think I received it for the um, for Art Car, for what me and Israel did right. together. Because right. I, I think that 
HCZ had been looking to produce innovative and collaborative ob, um, projects right. that you know crossed disciplines. And actually, my background in theater, where you would show up with like a bunch of people who didn't really know how to do anything, and by the four months later, we had put on a show, we'd built the sets, mm -hmm. we we learned the music, we learned the dance steps, we made the costumes, we took over each other's roles if need be that you knew everyone had to do their part to put on this production. Right. You had to put yourself out there and you had to project manage it from beginning to end. I think that just makes any ambitious project doable. So if you want to win the NISOD, just make sure that you go do high school musical theater and then continue it for a couple of more years. Right. So collaboration is the key. Right. Teamwork. And Israel, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to HCC. Well, I wish you had gone uh, with me first because I don't <laughs> think it's I'll be able to live up to that, that well, amazing life. you've had like multiple life. jobs. Well, I've had a lot of you've different jobs. Sure, sure. You so, should <clears throat> ask him about I, his EMT I lived years. in uh, Houston pretty much all my life. Um, mm -hmm. I've, you know, I started off uh, uh, in my... You know, my first job was as you know as a as a sacker, and then I worked my way all the way up through through those jobs at a grocery store. And I've, I, gee whiz, the careers have spanned a lot of different stuff. Um, so I did work as an EMT intermediate. You know, I did the IVs and in in the intubation, all that stuff in the back of the ambulance, which was an amazing uh, time. Uh, I, my, the majority of my career prior to HCC was. Um, I was a mortgage underwriter, right? So when people would um, <laughs> apply for mortgage loans, right, I would take their loan application, their credit score, and all their bank checks and all that stuff, and so make it and make stuff. a decision yeah, whether they got the loan or not. To like bank, <laughs> yeah. Banking. And so just like when two thousand, a little bit of everything. <laughs> yes, yes, a lot of uh, a lot of things interest me. Um, and so when two thousand eight happened with the, the 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 mortgage, the you know the subprime mortgage industry kind of took a tank. I I actually took a very very hard hit about that because that was my industry. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had risen from in that career all the way to an operations manager of that position. So when it was time for me, when my company had closed, <laughs> it was time for me to switch careers and switch industries. How old were you at that moment? Um, about 35. Five. Right. So yeah. I was also at like yeah. 35 yeah. when I was like, oh, need to read. And then you found yeah. out what you wanted to be when you grow up. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> a maker's I, I haven't grown up yet, but I, it's always something new. He hasn't. Um, so <laughs> the. <laughs> well, did you ever think that you were going to go from that field to something that would be creative, such as art and all of that? You know, I didn't, and I'll, we'll talk about creativity and what that is okay. a little bit. But I didn't. Um, I didn't know that. I had no clue. Um, so when. Uh, I could not find another job uh, at the same level because all those management jobs required a bachelor's degree or higher. Right. And of course, I didn't have a uh, college degree. So I decided to go back to school. And so uh, I had a few core classes to, to uh, still complete. So I went to HCC to complete mm. those. And so right. while I was there, uh, I was, I don't know, in a chemistry class or something. And um, I was helping the professor with the technology in the classroom. And she was very happy and very you know, pleased with that. And so she recommended me to. I know uh, what you can do. Yeah, I know what you could do. And so I'm going <laughs> to refer you to, to someone for a possible job. And um, so she referred me to my boss, my old boss, uh, Charlotte Hamilton. And uh, Charlotte said at the time, you know, this person never recommends anyone. So the fact that she's recommending you, I think you, you'd be a good risk. And so uh, she gave me a part-time job as an IT technician. And so uh, I worked there for a couple of years, then I went full-time, and then uh, we did we ended up the West I, I guess I want to point to years or so. both my story and his story mm -hmm. has us going to undergrad late in life. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we were not conventional 18 year olds going. Like we went and like lived our life and then mm, realized and then back, from we, the workforce that mm, college degrees are really actually extremely important. necessary right. exactly. and went back. Well, we're going to, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what you two do, how y'all work together and some wonderful other artistic things that they're putting together together. Lisa, when she's not moving to a Zydeco beat, she's making moves towards a better job with a nursing degree from Houston Community College. Ça c'est bon, Lisa. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to Line by Line, and I'm Dr. Tony Rayo Sutherland, and we are talking with Ashley Hope and Israel Garza. Um, 
tell us a little bit, we, we mentioned the HCC West Houston Institute and their Idea Studio Makerspace. What is that? That is a mouthful. What is it? Can you describe the makerspace? I think I could. Okay. Right. So a makerspace, generally speaking, is what I, as, as far as I'm concerned, is a place where there's a, like a, uh, an accumulation in one area of a lot of different kinds of tools that uh, people can share. So they don't have to necessarily um, already have an expertise in the tool or... Um, or even know that it exists. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. like so, walk okay. in like, whoa, what's that? And so we have a lot of different kinds of, 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 of manufacturing capabilities in our space. Mm -hmm. We don't have, um, what we don't have is that we don't have a tie to any one department uh, So at HCC. So literally any student, faculty, or staff member can be a member of our space. You could be a member of our space yeah. and we'd love to have you. Um, so <clears throat> the way we uh, have people on board is that we have a membership model. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have to become a member, which is just about you know an hour long training. <laughs> And then once you're a member, you can go and do tool trainings for anything, right? So we have a huge variety of things we can do. We can do the most common stuff is 3D printing, laser cutting, vinyl cutting, things to make T-shirts or, or decals or stuff. Okay. But we have a full-size, full-service wood shop, full-service metal shop. Uh, we have virtual reality capabilities. They have the fiber art, so like industrial <clears throat> sewing and embroidery. Oh, wow. And it's all very, very visible, meaning that I might walk in to use the 3D printing, but by the end, I've spent an hour watching the person do you know, plasma cutting or industrial sewing. And so I leave with that percolating in the back of my mind. And it's so. a learning experience, yeah. a learning <laughs> space. So, okay, what's the difference between a maker space and what we call the idea studio? So a maker space is a, has always been just like a generic term for that kind of space. And so uh, you used to hear things like maker space or hacker space, fab, lab. fab labs, things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in different circles, they mean slightly different things in terms of their tool you know, accumulations, what they have. Um, but it's, it's become just a generic, maker space has become just a generic term. Idea studio is specific to us. The, um, we, we wanted to brand ourselves. We wanted to make sure that we were able to separate ourselves in, when, in that sea of makerspaces. Um, so um, the idea in Idea Studio is an acronym. And so that stands for Innovation, Design, Entrepreneurship, and the Arts and Sciences. Right. And so we are able to um, have all variety of um, instructors come into our space. And so the majority of the traffic that comes into our space is when a <clears throat> professor provides, gives an assignment to the mm -hmm. student, right. and that student almost necessarily has to come into our space to complete that assignment. Okay. So uh, whatever learning objectives that they have to do normally in, you would, the low hanging fruit for these kinds of spaces are like engineering, arts, stuff like that. But STEAM. Yeah, STEAM, <laughs> steam uh, yeah. Uh, categories or course, courses. Um, but we've had humanities come in, we've had um, history, biology, and English and biology. Um, and so they are able to take their original learning objectives and kind of tweak those assignments where they're getting kind of additional layered Hands objectives on, on. top. Hands <clears> on. <throat> See what it really is about, not just theory. Yeah, that project-based learning really makes a difference in terms of their retention, at least anecdotally from what I've observed so far. Right. I also, I can't remember who I had this conversation with. Maybe it was Kurt Ewan, who actually is, this is a long title, let me get this right, the Vice Chancellor of Instructional Services. Is that right? Close. Mm -hmm. That was very close. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but he's a you know a big honcho, and yeah. so he <laughs> thought, yeah. look, we have this um, room that was going to be jewelry making, uh -huh. and until we outfit it, we'd like to bring in an artist to kind of model um, creative production, oh, creativity neat. in this kind of fishbowl setting. Mm -hmm. And so, like you know, I would walk in like all artists do with like nothing made or no one asking for the thing that I'm going to make and me be like, I'm going to make this for the world that they're going <laughs> to love it, right? Like, so I would go in and I'll do it and it might take a long time. It might take a short time. I remember actually an engineering kid said, oh, it was really interesting to watch you for a year. It changed my production mode because I would see you for a year building nothing except for these little things and in the last month you assembled them all together and I was like, oh. Magic. Right, yeah. And he was like, so... It was interesting that you held the model of the bigger thing you were making in your head as mm -hmm. you were making the smaller parts. And right. So parts in the whole. And so that, that's what I was there to do, to kind of model that. But being that Israel has welding, wood, fiber arts, 3D printing, vinyl, uh, just the handmade tools, like, you know, mm -hmm. space to do just things with your mm -hmm. hands. Um, and HCC has automotive, machining, 
AV and the arts. It right. was just very clear that uh, art car is the perfect one. We just never had one. I used to watch the art car parade with my now, kids. Now, what is an art car? And tell us a little bit about that real quick. So Houston actually is one of the um, foremost cities in outsider art. It means people that are making art for not the global art market or the museum market, but making it for celebrations of, you know, uh, popular culture and pedestrian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it is one of the foremost cities because it has one of the best art car parades, mm -hmm. which is a parade where normal people or schools or um, it, companies take a car or any kind of moving vehicle and they outfit it as grandiose as they can mm -hmm. artistically. You know, right. some people are doing things like gluing on um, bottle caps and some people like us are welding and painting and mm -hmm. creating spinning trees and stuff and so like yeah. <laughs> our inside is going to be we'll an see. electric brain <laughs> oh, um so it was just very obvious that one hcc is at the heart of the city but so is the art car is like you know runs right through it and i really wanted us to roll down in style that parade and I was like, oh, we should get this going. No one wants this. <laughs> no one's behind me. I don't want to do it alone. And then when they gave me the artist in residence, I was like, oh, well, now, like, you have to do what I want to do. And, like, <laughs> so we did the art car, and the support's been great. And this is and our second art great. car. This, this is, is our and, second art car. Right. And I understand <clears throat> that the first time you did it was bicycle. Right. We were waiting for the ambulance, and it needed work before. Mm -hmm. And so I had already enlisted a bunch of students, and... We were like, look, there's a Free Wheels Houston, which is a great charitable organization that gets bikes from the community and then gives them to refugees or the impoverished to help them get to work, mm -hmm. go shopping, have mobility. So it's it's a great – and they worked with us. They gave us wrenches, which are like the human – like grease monkeys for bicycles that like help us <laughs> and we chopped them up and we re-welded them we welded ferris wheels on top we uh attached wings um and they fabricated all of this stuff in in our space and in, in the idea studio so everything they learned how to use a tool and then mm -hmm. they use that tool to make an you know the art the and art you bikes. won a, an award with that we did we won the grand prize for the non-motorized that's wonderful. Um, and we also had two bikes. Yeah. So now this year, you're no. working on an ambulance, mm -hmm. Mr. EMT there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Tell yes. me a little bit about that. Tell me, tell Actually, me about that. Actually, do you that. know the electronics inside? Could you look at the electronics <laughs> of an ambulance? You, you, you're trying to route them? Yeah, yeah. I never really uh, worked on, the, on um, it in that respect. Well, okay, I tell you what. They're I can giving, tell you what the bins are for. <laughs> <laughs> they're giving me a cue to say that we need to go to a break, so let's do this. Let's okay. go to a break. We'll come back. And we'll tell you, you about the ambulance. Please do so. Okay. So you got something to look forward to. We'll be right back. Meet Wally. He's a single dad. He's also a role model for his five-year-old son, going back to school with him. This time, Wally's going to Houston Community College for a second career. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to Line by Line. I'm Dr. Tony Rail Sutherland, and we have Ashley Hope and Israel Garza with us from uh, HCC West Houston Institute. And they're here, and they're going to talk to us about um, the art car. Uh, the ambulance. Ambulance. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually an ambulance. Before we do that, me and Israel, because Kurt Ewan does put the bacon <laughs> on our breakfast table, <laughs> feel like we should point out that his job title is, Kurt Ewan is Vice Chancellor for Planning and Institutional Effectiveness. And it was institutionally effective to put an artist in a STEM maker's face. Yeah, there okay. you go. And so, if we're correcting things, I do have to say that we do have a North Forest campus. It's just not the one that you were in. It's that one's one. gone, right. That yeah, one's I was gone, in but we have a brand new one. But anyways, right. continue on. Um, okay, <laughs> so institutionally effective. I'm in a STEM maker space. Um, making an art car out of an old ambulance from Health and Safety. We uh, have been planning it for a while. We did the bikes because we didn't get the ambulance. We spent the summer gutting the ambulance, you know, pulling out all its medical equipment and investigating what is underneath the walls of an ambulance and the, mm -hmm. like, stretchers and the oxygen machines. And then I had a group of kids, there's been two semesters working on the ambulance, and the first one 
largely worked on demo and design where we really thought about what were the things that HCC students, and they all brought in designs. And the one thing they all had in common, which was we were originally gonna do like, this, this is an emblem for medical, this is an emblem for the arts, this is an emblem, and none of them came in with that. They all came in across the board with a vision of something that goes, that is like a second chance or a first opportunity for the family, like something kind of um, dead that's growing, you know, oh, a nest, I like um, that. a tree, um, lots of things. And so I decided to fuse a lot of their imagery. So the final drawing is mine, but every move on the final drawing actually comes from a student's their drawing. Their ideas. Yeah, so my job was to kind of unify their ideas and make them coherent in a coherent mm -hmm. design. But um, I really liked the idea that HCC, like across the board, they were like, I'm the first to go to college. Oh, I'm 35 and I'm changing my career. Like it was always um, something where HCC offered them an opportunity they thought they would never fresh have. Fresh start. Fresh start. So our design is kind of from destruction into glorious something. Oh, so there were a lot it. of sketches of the different designs, and mm -hmm. so they were really cool. And I thought, oh, I want that one, or I think that would be kind of a cool one. When I finally saw your final rendering, uh, I thought that was gorgeous. It was utterly perfect. So I'm, I'm know, glad like, that they moved the way they're doing it. There's lots of in it. innovation on it because we have, you know, we had biology students, electrical engineers, we have mechanical engineers, art students. So the inside of the ambulance is going to be an upholstered brain, but our electrical an engineering element, brain, right? Did you say? Yes, they're <laughs> running LED lights to imitate the synapses in the brain. Oh, right? I like that. So that'll that. be really cool at night. And then neat. there's a tree on top that that spins. That's also lit up. But we had an issue that the door of the maker space, you know, it was a tight fit for the ambulance. It was actually the turn that's tight. So we could not build out. We could only build up. Okay. Right. So our design had to be very, very three dimensional without actually going any wider. And so mm -hmm. it was, we had, you know, constrictions. Which I saw uh, her skills, her driving skills uh, were quite amazing because she was the only one that was able to back it into the space that it currently is. And <laughs> I tried it, yeah, Jordan tried it, several of like, step aside. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Step, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the students have been great. Yeah, I was going to say, what about the students? I mean, this has got to be new for them to uh, put all this stuff together and be creative, but also be able to weld and the technical end they and all that, that other stuff. The learning all those tools, I mean, they they do things like they set up their uh, cell phones to FaceTime to all their friends, them <laughs> welding. Do you know what I mean? Like they're they're incredibly proud of like this? walking <laughs> out with this skill set. They learn 3D printing, laser etching, vinyl cutting, welding, woodworking, you know, and plastering, like all sorts of things. Um, I, the best I could describe what it meant for the students was I always try, and I do, if you look at the bicycles, I make my objects exactly like the kid designed them. Okay. So they walk out, you know, I, where I can say to them, no, that thing that you wanted to make or you thought maybe I could, you can. Mm -hmm. You can make that thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's really important to me. And I remember one kid who designed the carnival bike saying that he couldn't believe he was staring at something that he, sh like, you know, bashedly came in with a little drawing, was like, well, what do you guys think of this? And then not only did we okay his, his thing, we spent a year making it. Yeah. You know, Spitting exactly. And he was like, you guys brought a team of people thought my idea was good enough to make. That kind of confidence, never mind being so, you know, amazed that you could weld, but the idea that team of people that you respect like what you had to offer. Right. And that confidence building has been huge for them. It's, it's kind of like a playwright who writes a play, and then at the end, the director and the designers and the actors yes. and the da 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 put it together, and then you see it and you go, wow. Right. It's, it Other just people a... put their like valued energies towards yeah. my yeah, idea. Like, that's, wow, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Um, so um, what are you... Uh, Okay, you came up with the ambulance. Now, where are you going to go from there? From there, you mean like in life? Like, what are we doing after like <laughs> after April seventeenth? After the ambulance roll? I know your, what I'm doing. What is your <laughs> next artistic project? I mean, I have a couple that I want to do in the art department. I'd like to collaborate. We recently um, blended with film, 
and I would like to do some work with film. I, I'm the digital arts professor, and like okay. maybe doing animations that we give to the audio people who are going to edit music to it. Like there's just wow. lots of opportunity for collaboration mm -hmm. in HCC, and I'm going to take a little bit of time figuring out the best way to do it, the best system, and then just go ahead forging new creations mm -hmm. with um, colleagues. Well, I know that the, um, tell me, you know, the makerspace or the West Houston Institute has so many rooms in it. Mm -hmm. I've been there where, you know, you look through and you can collaborate so well. It's got um, uh, high technology learning. Tell me a little bit about that and how can, uh, what are you thinking? What is the goal? What are you thinking about doing in the future with that? What, where are you going with that? Well, the West Houston Institute itself has um, several components to it. Uh, the Idea Studio, I think, is the most uh, front-facing, mm -hmm. but we, uh, we have another area called the Collaboratorium, uh, which Dr. Laurie Williamson uh, heads, and, and that is an intentional facilitated space where they take um, internal departments, external departments, and they, they achieve their goals if they have to decide what are our uh, strategic plans going to be, uh, Dr. Williamson will work out the action items and help them ask the right questions in order to figure out what that's going to be. But the main thrust is going to be with innovative uh, techniques in the classroom. And if you wanted to do that, you probably would want to speak with uh, Dr. Swan, John Swan, uh, who's kind of the manager over the uh, WHI. So very quickly, um, if someone wants to get involved with the West Houston Institute, what do they do? Uh, speak with John Swan. Um, he is kind of the coordinator of all the things that come into okay. the space. We'll so get we his number and, or, and great. information and put that on. And uh, and you already told me. What did you tell me that you're gonna? Oh, you could, yes. I remember. I think like, we should do a sculpture <laughs> garden for each of the campuses. Yeah, okay. the art I'm down garden, for that. The, what, what well, listen, I, we are unfortunately out of time. I wish we weren't. You have so many <laughs> wonderful things to talk about, but we have to go. So thank you for being with us. This is Line by Line. I'm Dr. Ray, uh, Tony Rail Sutherland, and watch for us next time. Thanks for having me.